Welcome back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. I am Duke. That is Van. Hey, you got it right. Look at that. I know. (laughs) And we've been on a little bit of a hiatus. We've been off a couple of weeks uh, as summer kicks in, but I still remember which direction is which, uh, uh, which is great. Um, And we're excited to talk about AI. Uh, and how this works in the church. And we invited two friends that we know are doing a lot with AI. Um, see, this direction I get right, because that one's not reversed. So above me, uh, Douglas Porter uh, from Sailorville Church um, up in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, good friends uh, of, uh, oh, you're even wearing a Vantage Pro shirt. Look at you, man. I like it. I like yeah, it. They're comfy shirts. <laughs> and then let's see if I can do this right. No, it's going to be that way is Brad Zimmerman uh, at Watermark Church in Michigan, not Texas, Michigan Watermark, which you have plenty yes. of water up there too. So, Yeah, we have, <laughs> we have a lot more water than Dallas, Texas. I will say that for sure. Yes, yes, indeed. Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Click that notification bell. And share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. So, yeah, the AI conversation, guys, has been getting fascinating. Um, I know I'm starting to get more and more into AI usage, but there's this idea like in the production world, in the worship world, like AI is not useful, right? I mean, what? what? (laughs) Brad's laughing. Go, Brad, go. (laughs) No, I mean, it's, it, it is so interesting where everybody enters this conversation from and what, uh, like, is it the rise of the machines? Is it the mark of the beast? Is it the end of humanity? Is it the next greatest thing? Why doesn't it do my laundry? Why is it stealing? You know, like everyone's coming from all of these different angles. And so it's just, it's always interesting where the conversation starts from when I have it with people. No, I mean, it's, it's a legit tool, right? I mean, it can, like every tool, it can be used for evil. Um, and there are certainly people who are doing that. Um, but, but, you know, we're in the business of, of good, right? And, and yeah. trying to help people uh, find relationship with Jesus. And, and it's, it's fascinating to think um, the more I'm starting to have these AI conversations with people, it's fascinating to, for people to kind of go, yeah, I don't know how it fits in the church. Um, but like I said, that's why we wanted to have you guys on, because you guys are, are two people we know who are making it work for you uh, in a church setting, and, and we're just fascinated to learn more. I do think it's a little bit of the rise of the machines, but still, you know. Well... But at the end of the day, we're doing a pretty good job of uh, ruining the world ourselves. So it's, I mean, it may just help us get there faster. <laughs> yeah. Some, somebody, I, I saw an interview, somebody says, Did, has anybody not been watching like every television show and movie for the last 40 years? Are we not, right. <laughs> we're not paying attention? <laughs> Well, and, and Van, I would say you out of everybody on this crew, at least that I know of, knows how hard it is to build animatronics uh, from your love of Disney and watching what it takes to make those. And so my uh, knowing what it takes for Disney to build an animatronic always gives me peace of mind when I think about the rise of machines, because I'm like, yeah. These robots are a lot of work and take up a lot of space and they're not oh, yeah. easy to make and they're super, you know, like we might have uh, computers that can talk and create and stuff like that. But uh, having one that's going to walk around uh, is going to be be a minute in my my perspective, at least. But well, and you know, I was telling my wife the other day, I said, you know, really, AI is, is a misnomer, you know, to say artificial intelligence and what we think of it, because really right now it's just. It's just a very, very, very smart database. I mean, that's that's basically what it is. It's it's a, a mimic machine. It's a it's yeah. It's only mimicking things that it has. You know, it's just that Google and Facebook and all these companies have been spending the last twenty years just collating data, and they found a way to migrate it into into something that that is easily accessible, and 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 mimic. A human. It's only it's just mimicking a human. It's not actually I think there's a there's a big disconnect between whether it's 
it's just a big database that's acting like it can talk to you and it's not really being howled nine, you know, 9,000, uh, you know, or the Terminator or a Cylon. It's just, it's, it's not really, it's not really sentient. I think that's what, if, if and you that's why talk I, to your computer, people think it's sentient. They say, think, oh, the computer's talking to me, so it's sentient like I am, because that's how we relate to it. But it's, you know. Right. Yeah, and if you look at the bottom of a chat GPT, you know, input deal, it says, like, always check the facts. It can hallucinate or come up with facts that aren't true or whatever. So always, like, basically check your work and validate everything that comes out of it because it is just collating things that make sense together, but it's not always, it doesn't actually know what it's doing for the most part. Uh, so yeah, it's like a politician. The- lawyer who almost got disbarred for doing a for putting in a bunch of yeah. of briefs to a court uh, case that were made up by Jeff GPT they weren't even real and when the clerks did the fact check they found out that half of the stuff that he had quoted was fiction <laughs> and that, that does not surprise me at all yep that happened yeah. that happened like I think at the end of last year or something like that so, so how are you guys using, cause you guys are both, um, you know, on staff at churches. How are you guys using AI kind of on a daily basis? Douglas, I know you're, you're constantly into it. So how, like, how does it make your world better? How are you using it? Uh, on a daily basis, it's more, uh, like tech support, looking up things, um, dumping an entire manual into it for a device and then just asking a question and it figuring it out based on that or a YouTube video. That's a tutorial. That's really long. Uh, Google's will, um, read the transcript and figure it all out. And I don't have to sit and watch a half an hour video. So I'm I'm definitely using it for tech support. Um, but I mean, I use it for a lot. I mean, just like you guys said, I could talk forever about every little project that I've done. Um, the biggest thing that we did recently was during vacation Bible school. Uh, we do, we go all out for that. We create scripts and skits and characters and all this kind of stuff. And our children's director used it a little bit to be brainstorming and, and trying to adapt to the theme of VBS. And then um, towards the middle of it, we're uh, wanting to come up with like a, they always kind of end on a song that they write and put it to like a, a current song or something and change the lyrics and mess around and stuff. And I actually just uh, took their script put it into chat GPT told me to write a sea shanty song because it was on pirates. And then huh. I put it into a music creation program called Suno and did it a, probably about 10, 20 different um, variations until I got the one that I wanted. And that's literally what we used the last night. I, I cut a couple of verses out, but I mean, it, it sounds like production, like we made it and we <laughs> it took me like half huh. an hour. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Chunk's still stuck in my head. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Brad, how are how are what's your, like your normal day to day usage of AI look like? Well, uh, I am much more into uh, generative imagery, um, and that's kind of my main focus. Whether it's I, I'm, dabbling with video videos just like getting really close and the tools are are getting closer but as far as like i don't know fooling people or feeling like it's like ready to go videos not quite there yet i don't think anybody would really agree that it's like fully there yet um but imagery is fully there and fully can trick people and is is ready to go and so i spend uh a lot of time in mid journey. Um, I, my workflow is kind of like basically brainstorm with chat GPT about graphics or things that I'm working on, maybe have it do some generations with Dolly of some ideas. Dolly kind of isn't, it's not super great. It's okay. Um, it does some things pretty well, but overall it's aesthetic feels like uh, digital paintings, not really like fully realistic, mm. uh, photography. It does really great, honestly, at logos. Um, they're 
a little more complex than like a standard, like super tight, um, simple logo, but it does a really good job with like illustrated logos. Um, but anyway, so I'll like do some brainstorming and then sometimes I'll, I'll have ChatGPT write my prompts for me and then I'll take those over to MidJourney, do a ton of different mm -hmm. generations of assets and stuff like that. And then I'll jump into Photoshop and use generative fill and generative expand and some of the different AI features in Photoshop and do the rest of my work in there to create content. And the cool thing about AI that I think a lot of people, you know, when they started seeing AI stuff, they, they saw it as like, it's this magical thing that can do wild and crazy stuff, but they don't, they didn't think of it. I think it got, it got talked about too much in the beginning as this this thing that can do wild things instead of a, a tool that can do practical things to, to make practical things easier. And so like the manual one is a great, a great tip of like link to a PDF of a manual and then just like ask it the questions of things that you want to do based on that manual versus like searching through and trying to understand it all, which is better in the long run, but you can get a faster a answer, you know, uh, with that PDF. But um, I've been really just trying to to figure out, you know, how does this fit into the workflow of things and how can I use it practically? And like one of my favorite examples, we did a uh, a, we we're working with Reach the Forgotten Ministry, which is a jail ministry that works in, in jails. And during Christmas time, they wanted to do Christmas in the jail. We can't technically go into the jail. So it was more about like building these kits and boxes of things to, to give people in the jail. And we wanted to do a, a fundraiser for it. And I'm trying to like visualize what would the graphic for Christmas in the jail look like that could be hopeful and not, you know, desolate and, you know, a big downer, but like that there's hope in the jail. There's life there. There's new life that's being created. And so I went and did like a whole uh, conversation with ChatGPT about it. And I ended up getting this really cool graphic where it's like a cell block de decorated for Christmas. And I could have never like gotten that image from any stock site, let alone been able to afford to like get that photo to like rent a cell block and then decorate it for Christmas and, you know, like make that look right. So that was like out of my reach of something I could have never done before, but AI made it possible. And then I uh, got a, a logo generated and then I did tons of tweaking to it to like finalize it. But this final graphic turned out super cool. And all of it was stuff that was like basically out of reach to me as a designer before, but now is within my reach because AI has made things more accessible. And so I'm just excited for the future with AI because we're going to see like artists and people who used to maybe like there's tools or things that were out of reach that are now within reach that their creativity can take and use those things and create some amazing things. And the people at Pixar and doing movies and all of that kind of stuff, their access to AI is only going to take all of those things even further than they've ever been before. I think it's just going to take everybody's ability of what they're creating up a ton. It's not just like one step forward. We're all getting like this giant leap forward in what's possible in all of our different areas. I think you still have to have a discerning, you know, I think there, I think where the, the talent is going to come in is discerning what is good from AI. <laughs> That's that's being an artist, though. That's yeah, always been being yeah, an artist right. is like the artist's eye, the artist's ear, the artist's taste of like what they right. Right. Because, well, I mean, because there's still you could, you know, it's just like uh, junk can still be you can just because you have Pro Tools doesn't mean the song's going to be good. Right. And, you know, and and that you were, you know, you were how you talk about videos almost there. Uh, I there's a YouTube channel called Goonie that does these retro trailers for current movies but they do like if star wars was in the 50s or if this yep. was, you know was in the 40s and they're like almost there it's yep. al it's almost right it's not right you can totally tell there's a total <laughs> uncanny valley happening like yeah. to the max but you're you're like you watch it and you go this is super close <laughs> you know like six eight months a year from now these will be pretty much nails and, and it'll yeah. be pretty amazing i would say end of 2024 
video will be uh, ready to go for most people to generate with. What the price point of that is, how long those clips are, you know, how many generations it takes to get something good, who knows, but I think you're going to see like, everyone can agree this is like great quality, like from either image to video or text to video generations that um, will be production ready, so. Yeah. No, that's, there's some good examples in there already. Obviously, the graphic creation, I, the manual thing, I had, I've just never, I mean, I know that you can add a file or a link reference and have it crawl it, but I've just never thought about having it read the manual for me. Um, you know, I'm so used to digging out instructions or manuals and figuring it out. I, it just doesn't even dawn on me that I could have something else do that for me. Um, so that's, I even that's, use it, I use it with multiple things. So, like, I have, uh, you know, the network. Uh, Wi-Fi networks and I'll tell it every device that we have on our network for like access points, switches, the main, what version of software we're on, everything. And it will, I'll say, this is what I want to do. And it can tell me whether or not I can do it, how to get there, which settings to change. I mean, it, it's not just one manual of one device. I can say, here's, you know, I'm using these uh, audio consoles on the system. Do they need to do this or that with Dante? And it will, it will remember the conversation it's just not like a one-off conversation you know that's what's i think that's what's great about it is you can just keep talking keep talking and keep building yeah it's not uh one prompt with one answer and then you have to do redo a prompt to get another answer and it doesn't remember what you did before it has that memory and like one time i was doing one i was like hey i'm working on this series called tripped up and i wrote the word as tipped up instead of tripped up. And I was like, Oh, sorry, I spelled that wrong. And then it gave me new answers. And it wasn't like I had to re-describe everything. I just had to fix my spelling error. And then all of a sudden I had, and I didn't even like edit the prompt. I just put in a new, you know, part of the conversation there, which is what you would expect in a conversation with anyone else, which is pretty incredible. And right. I'll go back, I'll go back like to a month ago when I was working on something and instead of starting all over again, it already knows all of this stuff that I have and I have a new problem and it just keeps remembering. So it, yep. that's huge. Well, and honestly, yeah. I mean, I think that's the, that was the dream of computers way back in the day is that it would be like, you know, the section of our brain that we just don't have to remember everything, you know, and, and in this world, you know, it's, it's so funny in technology. We talk about this all the time. I think Brad, you and I had this conversation probably five years ago. It's impossible for anybody to know everything now in, in, in just in what we do, just in like yeah. AV, it's, it's not even possible. People say, Oh, they're the expert. Well, okay. <laughs> to a point, but technology moves so fast. Now there's no possible way to know everything. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It just, you know, it, it's just, and having like an extra, you know, to me, that's what a, ro if I had a, a, a robot, like that's what I would want. Please remember all the things I'm going to forget and remind me of them as we walk down the road. That's what I want. You know, yep, I don't our need digital to clean brain. my toilets. I don't need to clean my toilets. I don't need to serve me food. I don't need that. I just need to be that part of my brain that I just can't access quickly, you know? Yeah. And that's what it's doing. So that's really cool. Yeah. What are, what are some of your favorite apps? You guys have mentioned a couple, but what are, what are some of the apps that you guys use on a regular basis? Cause it's I, some people I know, cause I was one of them at one point was like, well, AI is either chat GPT or, you know, whatever, but it's, it's not that simple. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, so one that I think people don't talk about very often that I think is a really incredible innovation is, uh, AI noise and reverb removal, um, because for the longest time, our noise cancellation processes were all based on like, here's your noise print, and then you cancel that out again. So it's gonna find all of these things, and then cancel that out against your recording so you can find your background noise and it'll analyze it and cancel those things out. But now they've gone through and created algorithms of like, here's what the human voice sounds like. Here's what reverb sounds like. Here's what not either of those two things sounds like. Here's everything else that's basically left. And then it just gives you three dials. So I use this um, plugin called Supertone Clear. It's from a Japanese audio company. Um, Waves has one too. I think it's what Clarity VX maybe is the name of that one. Um, but 
Supertone Clear is incredible, and it basically just has three different dials. It's got ambience, vocals, and uh, reverb, I think, is the, the labels, and it's just dials that you turn up and down. And you can, it's a VST plugin, so I like roll it into Premiere, and every single audio project that I do, I just like turn those reverb and ambience dials down, and my vocals are great. Uh, mm. We celebrated 20 years of our church recently, and I went back into the archives to like uh, put together some video montages, and I had like a cute kid Mother's Day video from the past that had a soundtrack to it, and I was like, well, I want to I want to bring this together with a bunch of other videos. I turned ambience down. It got rid of the entire soundtrack, and you would have never known that there was a, a soundtrack behind it it was just clean vocals even though i didn't have stems for my audio from it so super incredible the plug-in uh like on sales like 60 bucks um it, i think it's maybe around 100 normally it's not subscription based um i'd be really i don't have like a great like waves rig to test it on but i'd be really curious to see what would happen in a live environment with it and what kind of delay time you're getting on it because you could kill some like some bad bleed of symbols and all of that kind of stuff with plugins like this. So there's a cool future for some of that stuff. So that's, that's just one random one. Yeah, I'm, using, I'm using stuff in apps more, more often. I mean, I use ChatGPT for a lot, um, but you know, like, obviously it's built into Photoshop. So I'm using it in there to clean things up and to edit things and change things. Um, Final Cut Pro has the same thing where you can like remove remove background noise and audio. So I've used it in there to clean up podcasts or a, a you know like we have a lot of volunteers that'll record their own podcast, but then you go back later and there's HVAC noise or a buzz or something. Right. Who knows? So cleaning that up. Um, I have uh, Gemini in my Gmail, so it's like on the sidebar of my email, and I can ask it things about my email. Uh, I just used it the other day for, I was actually working with uh, Isaiah going back and forth on uh, an amp tr troubleshooting thing. And we went back and forth for a long time about it. And we're like, hey, let's just uh, email tech support. And I just said, summarize this email uh, thread and then hand it off to the, the next place. And it just bullet pointed everything that we had already gone through. So we didn't have to like repeat ourselves back to tech support. Mm -hmm. Just, just inside of apps, I just like obviously Apple's coming out with it. I think that's stuff like that is what's going to change daily life. It's just that it's there, it's available inside of all of our apps. Yeah, I think one yeah. thing that I that I just saw that was really cool on the on the new Galaxy phone, um, you can circle something in a photo, and AI will find it on Amazon, whatever, whatever. It will find that product for you. Which is like for me, that's awesome because I because I watch like a lot of woodworking videos and stuff like that, and sometimes they'll not link to those things, and you could literally and I mean it starts on Galaxy or an iPhone and then it goes to everything right. else. So you know within a year we'll be able to well, do that. That's on whatever. the e-commerce dream right there. Everybody can just <laughs> point at something and it comes you up literally on literally circle. And I you know it's like you know their whole ad right now is can an iPhone do this? Not right, right. now. But it will be able to very soon. And in September, <laughs> yeah. uh, exactly. in September, there's no competition anymore. Right now, you can have the lead. Uh, yeah, and they do similar stuff where you can like point the phone at like uh, plants, and it will tell you like what plant you're looking at. You can point it at those horrible laundry labels that no one knows what those stupid icons <laughs> mean, and it will tell you what those icons mean. You know, there's some really practical ones uh, there yeah, for I, sure. I have one that you can point at. Uh, lumber, like, and it will go, that is redwood. That is whatever the, you know, that's mahogany. That's so you can go, Oh, what is this made out of? And it will, it, which is insane to me, but it's awesome at the same time. Well, and yeah. there's, there's an app for everything. I saw one the other day um, that popped up. Um, it, it's a gift giving app. So literally you put in a person and you help it make sure it has the right person. And then it scours all of their social media. It's got like, it scours everything online about them, which is terrifying, but it will actually come up with like gift ideas. You pick one and it will take care of delivering it like fully wrapped with a note if you want or whatever. And I'm just like, Oh my God. 
<laughs> is this terrible. is this app called like the husband app because this sounds like the most husband doesn't know what to get wife or kids app i've ever heard of <laughs> yeah, this this was uh the well the context it, it i mean it certainly will work that way but the context i was reading it in was uh actually in the corporate world like if we decided just we decided we wanted to send douglas a gift next week we can put put his name in make sure we've got the right douglas and all of a sudden it will find something that's perfect for him which i imagine would be something video or motorcycle related so see i yeah. didn't even need enough to help <laughs> but i would i mean if i could if i could search my instagram and see all the photos of my bike it would know what bike i have and there you go yep. Right. Yep. makes sense yep so. Yeah, some of the other you had asked about tools, uh, some of the other like generative ones that I use regularly and I'll like rank them a little bit. So when it comes to generative imagery, uh, Mid Journey is kind of like the top tier best option you have out there right now. If you're getting started and you're like, OK, they said that it was the best. Let me give it a shot. You still have to start on Discord right now. The web version is open to people who have generated a hundred images. Um, and every time you put in a prompt, you're generating four images. So really you just need to do 25 prompts inside of discord, and then you can move over to the web version and use that. And the web version is so much better. I wish they would just open it up to the public. It's just yeah, a lot never, easier I to never use. I why a... they did that. That doesn't make that did that never made any sense to me. The whole discord thing. <laughs> I mean, it, it definitely is a limiting factor, which was in their benefit because it made it so they didn't onboard too many users too fast. Um, and I think it was probably their programming mindset of like, we can just write code and make everybody else write code and we don't have to think about anything else, you know? So I think there right. were some things behind that, but so you got Midjourney. Um, you have uh, like Stable Diffusion is, uh, basically an open source uh, image generation model. They have stable audio as well and stable video to do all these different generation types. But Stable Diffusion, since it's open source and is really high quality, it's basically what powers most of the image generators you see out there. So um, Leonardo.ai is another really good one. That one's based on Stable Diffusion. Ideogram um, is a really uh, a fun one to do like logo work and graphic design work with. Um, if you're trying to get like a final image out of a single prompt, which I don't recommend, but um, if you're shooting for that, you could try ideogram for that one, which again is based on uh, stable diffusion. And then from like the video world, um, there's a bunch of different ones coming around uh, soon. They're not quite there. And then the audio ones, uh, Douglas mentioned Suno. Um, there's another one called Udio. Um, that one's pretty crazy because that one can do multiple voices. So it's not just a single voice, but you can get harmonies. Uh, I was doing a like, seminar for SALT conference on AI, and I generated a couple songs for them about the conference and like pulled up a couple like random things. You can generate modern worship with uh, with Udio. And like one of them so started with like arena crowd sounds, just like a passion live recording album. And then it went to somebody who sounds just like, um, oh man, I'm dropping his name right now. But anyway, it has like all of the like perfect quirks of being a passion song. And it was totally written by AI, sounded incredible, had great hooks to it. And the cool thing about those is like, you don't have to see it as like, well, this is writing worship songs. It can be like, this is helping me come up with ideas for music. And then I could write new lyrics to it. Or this is coming up with, you know, like it can be an idea generator for you to then like launch off of. You don't have to necessarily see these things as replacement tools as much as they are brainstorming tools or uh, getting started you know things yeah well and you hit you hit a good topic that uh, we're unfortunately out of time for on this episode but uh, if you guys are game I'd, I'd like to hit on the next episode um, getting into kind of some of those key tips and tricks on on how to get kind of the most of this um, so uh, Douglas Brad thank you so much this is super fascinating and and let's do it again very soon <laughs> sounds, sounds great 
Okay. So we'll uh, we'll put a, a bunch of this info into the show notes, um, as well as uh, contact info for these guys. If you want to pick their brains, uh, we'll, we'll get you an email address uh, for them as well. Uh, but uh, thanks for thanks for watching the Insights Podcast. Um, it's we, we have a lot of fun doing these. And if you have any topics you'd like to throw at us, make sure you do um, throw some comments down. Uh, uh, just for Van, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, please, <laughs> please, gotta throw like that and subscribe. So I won't have to say it over and over again. (laughs) But uh, thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, We'll be back with more AI next week um, uh, or next episode um, and uh, good stuff.